Okay, I've made up a problem with some real life connections uh, for circular motion. So here is a map of the intersection between I-55 and I-12. And so it has these uh, clover leaf on off ramps, which are kind of cool, but probably not the best design. But anyway, so the question is, suppose you're coming, let's see, this would be, you're coming this way. You're coming on I-12 uh, west and you want to go to I-55 south, so you're going to go near like that. And the question is, what kind of speed should you have for the car? So I want to find the, the, the appropriate speed of the car uh, at this point right here. And you'll notice that it's not a circle, right? This is not a complete circular path. That one actually is much better. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to find the, uh, if I want to find the friction, the speed at that point, I need to know what, if, as though it were moving in a circle. So this circle is, I fit this circle in here to find the radius of curvature at that point. It's different at different points. Um, and so this is actually what I did was I took a, a screenshot from Google Maps and Google Maps has a measure tool in here. So I'm actually measured from this point to that point in Google Maps and that's 320 2.8 meters and then I put the picture into tracker video analysis if you just google tracker that's a C and that's our video analysis it's a free Java program that runs pretty much on everything that you can do to do video analysis but you can also uh, measure things in a picture and I can actually they have a circle fitter so I fit the circle there is a center of the circle and this gives me a radius over here of 54.8 meters so that's really what I want to do I want to look at uh, how fast a car can move in a circular radius of 54.8 meters uh, I picked a mass of the car is 5,000 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction of 0.4 that's it having units so let's do that okay so now for some physics let me draw a side view. There's the center of the circle, and here's the car. And so in this case, the car is going into the into the board, into the into the paper. So what forces do I have acting on this? Well, I have the gravitational force pulling down. I have the normal force pushing up from the road. And then I have a friction force pushing this way, F friction. Uh, and that frictional force in that direction is what causes this to move around in a circle. And I know the radius of this circle. I'll just call it R for right now. R. So let's go ahead and use the momentum principle. So let's first use the momentum principle in two, in two different directions. Let's deal with the momentum principle in the X and the Y direction separately. So first I'm going to write the momentum principle in the y direction. F net y is the change in momentum in the y direction over the change in time. Or you could write that as dp dy dt. But either way, if the car is on level ground and it's not accelerating up or down, then the change in momentum in the y direction is zero. So that means the net force in the y direction is zero. That means that n minus mg is equal to zero. So in this case, the mg has a negative y component. The n has a positive y component. So that's how I get this. And from this, I get n equals mg. Now be careful with this. This is true here. This is not always true. The normal force is not always equal to the weight. And why do we care about that? Well, we care about that because I need that for my model of friction. The magnitude of a friction force for static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static kinetic friction times the normal force. So the harder these two surfaces are pushed together, the greater the friction force between them. So I need to know n, and I have n. And this is less than or equal to, but I want to find out how fast it's going. So I'm going to look at the maximum frictional force. So say the maximum friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now we can look at F net in the x direction, F net x equals, well there's only one force in the x direction and that's this. So it's fs, ff, and that's going to be equal to mu s times n, which is mu s times mg, because n is equal to mg. 
and that's going to be dpx dt. At that instant, it's accelerating this way. So I can write that as m v squared over r. Remember, for an object moving in a circle, the change in momentum in the direction of the circle is m v squared over r, and that's towards the center of the circle. So now I can write this out us mg equals m v squared over r, the m's cancel. Which is really cool because now I have this map and I can design this road and the speed limit and it doesn't depend on the mass of the car, it does depend on the coefficient. I want to solve for v, so I'm going to say v squared equals mu s g r, so v is the square root of mu s g r. So let's put in our values, square root of 0 0.4, 9.8, that's, that's the magnitude of the gravitational uh, field. And then R was 54.8. And I left off the units, but I'm going to put these in drop. Okay, so I'm going to just put in 0.4, enter, 9.8, 